E. Okay. Hey humans of the world, I'm Raga Gargi and today is a Tuesday, which means it's time for True Crime Tuesday. If you're interested in true crime stories, serial killers, cults, paranormal activities, UFO deals, basically anything spooky, kooky, please consider subscribing to my channel because that is what I do over here every second Tuesday. I know it's been a little while since I have posted but here I am and today we are discussing the nightmarish world of sleep paralysis. We'll take a look at the science behind it and also uncover some very real and very scary experiences of people who have suffered from sleep paralysis. Good luck catching some sleep tonight. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night and you find a shadowy dark figure with glowing red eyes staring at you intensely. You try to scream but you can't, you try to move but you can't move a single muscle. If you are familiar with this, you've probably experienced an episode of sleep paralysis. As you are sleeping, your body alternates from rapid eye movement to non-rapid eye movement sleep. During non-rapid eye movement sleep, your body is relaxed. But as your body transitions to rapid eye movement sleep, your eyes begin to move quickly and you begin to dream. To prevent you from acting out in these realistic dreams, your brain has a clever solution. It temporarily paralyzes your body. Sometimes, however, your brain wakes up, but your body is still under the spell of the rapid eye movement paralysis. And this leaves you in a paradoxical state between dreams and reality. This is when you start to hallucinate. The sense of touch is very heightened and people report feeling a weight on their chest. From a region in Spain originates the tale of Cassandra, a black creature that invades people's home and sits on their chest while they're asleep, making it difficult to breathe and causing nightmares. In Egypt, sleep paralysis is often thought to be caused by a jinn and in Japanese folklore, it is called Kana Shibari, which is the state of being totally bound as if constrained by metal chains. And among ethnic groups in Vietnam and Laos, a pressing spirit tries to asphyxiate the sleeping person. In Newfoundland, Canada, it is the old hag that comes and sits on people's chest. One of the most common things that people have seen while experiencing sleep paralysis is the hat man. It is a dark figure of a man wearing a large hat and studies have shown that tons of sufferers have seen this shadowy figure. What's intriguing for me is that in Turkey, the sleeping paralysis phenomena is called Karabasan. In a typical episode of Karabasan, the Turks say that an evil supernatural entity wearing a white brimmed hat enters into the room and strangles the victims with its hands. Snatching the hat according to some versions of the story is the only way to prevent this spirit from returning again. So that was a brief of the science and the legend behind sleep paralysis. Let's move on to some terrifying real experiences of people. Before we do that, if you are liking this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, don't forget to share it to your friends to make them aware of this phenomena of sleep paralysis. This story I'm about to narrate is of a former Redditor who had recurring experiences of sleep paralysis. One day he was taking an afternoon nap when another terrible episode happened. He says, I woke up around 2 p.m. unable to move. Each of my experiences beforehand were different. I was being held and choked by a dark figure. I would try to yell but nothing would come out. I would panic and begin to pray and then it would let me go and leave. This time though, it dragged me off from my couch and yanked me violently with my face down in broad daylight where I could not see it. I am a healthy 33 year old man who isn't scared easily but at that moment, I thought I would never see my children again. I started praying and that woke me up. There was a handprint on my ankle from where the entity grabbed and dragged me. It had five fingers like that of a man. I had a large pet dog at the time and he was clawing at the back door, growling like I have never heard him do before. I let him in the house and he was snarling, running from room to room, 
chasing something that I could not see but had heavy footprints on my wooden floor. I realized my dog had almost clawed halfway through a two inch thick wooden door trying to get in to protect me. I am scared even narrating that because I know he must have felt like it was like hours. Since you know how you dream and you feel like the dream is going on forever and ever but it's literally just been two minutes since you've slept. Another Reddit post on sleep paralysis was this. I have it a few times in a year. The most memorable one was when I woke up in my bed unable to move and I looked to the left towards my wardrobe. In the open door of the wardrobe was a little old lady with long white hair and floaty grey ragged clothes. A classic hag really. She saw me and started screaming, You shouldn't be able to see me! You shouldn't see me! repeatedly. Then she vanished and reappeared at my bedroom door, peering through the crack. Finally, I was able to move and really woke up and everything was normal. I caught this crazy story on Reddit where the user had shared a drawing of her sleep paralysis demon which tormented her through the nights. I happened to hallucinate the same creature almost every night. He isn't pleasant. He's been haunting me for as far as I can recall. So I decided that maybe if I try drawing him, I will feel more in control of him rather than victimized. Here he is. I have an underlying fear that I might have just made it worse by letting it escape my mind and attain a physical depiction. Only time will tell. What do you think of these stories? We've all seen those sleep paralysis demon memes, right? Have you experienced sleep paralysis? I had one last year. I woke up in the middle of the night to hear someone open my room's door and then close it back. There was no one in my apartment at that time. I was not able to move, so I was really freaked out. I tried moving my arms in an attempt to wake myself up and after what felt like eternity, I finally woke up and of course I checked my house to see if there's anyone there, but no one was there thankfully and I just went back to sleep again. So let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section below and I'll see you next time with another intriguing video. Till then, take care of yourself, give yourself some warm love and I'll see you. Bye bye.